Let's bring in the Shadow Foreign Minister, Simon Birmingham now. Simon, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. So who are you taking in this war of words good between day. Anthony Albanese and Elon Musk? I think it's a pretty clear message for social media companies, and that is that there's one law in Australia. Everybody should comply with the law in Australia. And our law has been built on the basis of Australian values and Australian standards, which are that we don't want our children or other Australians exposed to dangerous, violent online content. And we do expect social media platforms to be able to use their immense technological power and power prowess to be able to remove such content. You think about what social media companies are able to ram down your throat through their algorithms and targeted content, they definitely have the capabilities and power to remove this stuff and to do so much faster and more comprehensively than they choose to do so at present. Elon Musk's argument, though, is that that is an attack on free speech and it leads to the distribution of propaganda, though. I mean, is he... Well, he appears to be trying to take the high road on that. Is he right on that front? Well, he's dead wrong. Uh, now, we all support legitimate free speech, uh, but uh, ultimately these freedoms do have limits when it comes to content and information uh, that can be harmful. And in this type of case, what we know is that images such as the stabbing of Bishop Emmanuel are not only disturbing in and of themselves, but they are frequently used by people uh, to stir up trouble in communities through coupling of disinformation, misinformation with that imagery. So there are multiple layers of reasons as to why this mm. stuff shouldn't be online, shouldn't be accessible to children and others. Uh, and Elon Musk's arguments run completely counter to the facts and the evidence as to how this type of information is used in a dangerous way uh, that drives disharmony and discord within our community. The takedown of the vision, though, I mean, what's that going to achieve in the long run? Because it seems as though Elon Musk has got no intention of playing ball here. And... It's his business. He doesn't appear to care. Well, this is where, if need be, laws need to be further strengthened and action will have to be taken. We're proud to have been the parties, the Liberal and National Parties in government, who established the eSafety Commissioner, who put in place the Online Safety Act, uh, who put in place the types of powers to try to drive these sorts of takedown arrangements. But, of course, these things in a battle against emerging technologies cannot be set and forget. And that's why the Albanese government needs to look at what other powers are necessary and what enforcement is necessary and to get social media companies to take notice and to behave like decent moral citizens uh, rather than right. uh, outliers who are allowing uh, all sorts of material to propagate. Anthony Albanese, he's in Papua New Guinea this morning. He's about to do the Kokoda Trail. This day is after China inked new trade deals with PNG. So... We will always be closer, but money talks at the end of the day. So what are your thoughts on PNG at the moment? Well, it's welcome that the Prime Minister is in Papua New Guinea. Uh, the visit just before Prime Minister Albanese's of Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi uh, is uh, well and truly a reminder uh, that the battle for uh, the uh, relationships uh, and positions uh, of different countries across our region is a constant one. Uh, there will be no let up in it. Uh, there will be uh, a consistent attempt uh, to try to shape and frame those relationships by others and by China in particular uh, in different ways. Uh, and we need to make sure that Australia and together with all of our other friends and partners are there uh, in driving those relationships forward in ways that underpin respect for the sovereignty of those countries and get to ensure that whether it's Papua New Guinea or any others, they understand that our relationship, our funding, our values uh, are all about support for them and their future uh, and do so in ways without inappropriate strings attached uh, or any other type of undermining of their systems. Just a final one here, Simon. The ACTU has this morning called on the government to end military trade with Israel, enforce targeted sanctions against offending officials and inject another $100 million of humanitarian aid into Gaza and West Bank. What do you make of that? Well, this ACTU statement, this is a two-page statement, it doesn't mention Hamas once and was released on the eve of Passover. It is a completely one-sided statement uh, that shows 
no consideration for the role that terrorists have played uh, in relation to the conflict happening in the Middle East, uh, and it is completely tone deaf in terms of the timing uh, to put it out uh, at such a sensitive time for Australia's Jewish community. And the ACTU ought to be apologising for the timing and ought to be reconsidering the content of that statement. All right.